It's the halfway point of the season. Max Verstappen and Red Bull are leading the drivers' constructors. Max Verstappen standings. <laughs> Verstappen is his name. There's Verstappen. been six different Grand Prix winners this year. Really? Mad Max winning seven races. Mad Max winning seven. And then we have Lando Norris winning his first race of his whole career at in Miami. Then we have Carlos Sainz, the smooth operator, winning in Australia. And then we have Charles Leclerc finally Monaco winning Monaco. his home race in Monaco. George Russell being at the right place at the right time oh, that's right. in Austria. For his first win of the season, his second of his career. And finally, one, Sir Lewis Hamilton breaking his own record for Nine. winning the British Grand Prix. Nine, Nine times. Dang, that's crazy. Join yeah. Mike, special guest Paul Schumann, all the way from Ireland. And we're drinking today. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and me, your host, Sherm, as we look back at you the mean midpoint. Shem. Shem is his new name. Of the Formula One season. Mike, you spelled your name wrong. I can't even believe this. Hit the music. <laughs> they said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man. America F1. America F1 coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Law. America F1. All right. What a great intro that was, wasn't it? I'm the best. Yeah, Dave was so happy today we did that song instead of one of my songs. <laughs> oh my God, he was that, so happy. That song should like win an award. It is going to win an it's award. Like it's like the be best a... podcast opening ever. That's because I'm a genius. I mean, I had nothing to do with it. Uh, you sung it. Not really. <laughs> like, it was like I talked it. What do you think, Paul? Is that not the best opening of any show you've ever seen? It's growing on me. <laughs> it's growing on me. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Paul, who's your boom surprise so far this year? Now, you can pick a constructor or a driver. Who do you got? Well, I'm going to bend the rules, and I'm going to say my surprise for this year is Sergio Perez going down. He's that's, not going down. He just got unlucky at, uh, at, at uh, the British Grand Prix. And everything that Red Bull did for Sergio didn't work. And he ended up two laps down at the end of the race. That that wasn't his fault, but it was like, but he's fine. They, they, this whole nonsense that they're going to take him out of the car. They just signed him to a two-year contract. He ain't going nowhere. Every year he's been at Red Bull, they've won the Constructors' Championship and the Drivers' Championship. He ain't going nowhere. So, Paul, why would you say that Sergio Perez is your boom surprise so far this year. Because he's been tanking for the last six or seven races. He hasn't <laughs> been supporting he hasn't been supporting Max. He hasn't been able to. So the car is not working for him all of a sudden. And the car is working for Max. So he's got to be there to support Max for the points. And we're getting to the point now. Well, this is the halfway review. And we're at the point now where Red Bull are proving <clears throat> that they're having to work their car way harder. And they're top of the league in used uh, allocation parts. And now they're going to struggle. They're going to have uh, good place penalties. Um, you know, McLaren, Mercedes, Ferrari in peaks and troughs, they have all managed to uh, bring the aero together and make it work. Um, and I think we're going to see Red Bull as a team uh, and their championship is not as secure. Uh, I'm not saying Max's uh, championship isn't secure, but I think that Red Bull's is no longer secure that they're going to win this year. And I think, and a lot of that is laying on on uh, Sergio Perez's shoulders. <clears throat> He's in the same car as Max. Well, Max can Max is making a an okay car work for him and not work for him, but I think Sergio's in trouble. And it doesn't matter that he's been signed for two years. There's already talk that if he doesn't meet certain criteria, he can be pulled. And they all can at any time. He's not, not going to be. Pulled. He's not going to be pulled. He, I got, this, this, <laughs> this, uh, I'm just I'm just saying he's going to be pulled. Uh, the idiots on the internet pressing on the buttons on their computer, they're, they're not pulling 
Sergio. Sergio's doing a great job. He's just had a, um, a couple races that he hasn't done that well in, and the car doesn't suit him. It suits Max. That's the whole point. Yeah. They, they build these cars for their number one driver, and their number two driver just has to do enough to win the championship. At the end of the year, I guarantee you he's going to be second, third, or fourth in every race like he has the last five years he's been there. It's Where like, is he now? What? Where is he now in the league? I have no, I have no idea what what place he's in. Is he in mm -hmm. third or fourth or something? I don't think so. I think he's lower than that. I can look, but I just I have to get another phone. But I think he had this he had this drought last summer too, where he he did four or five races where he he didn't do all that well in. Um, yeah. Uh, but I, I I don't I don't I don't think the Red Bull are Sergio going to... Perez right now is six. He's there you go. Points. Um, this is my argument. I, I'm not like I'm not. I don't have anything against Sergio. I think he's a nice guy. Uh, nothing good or bad. Um, would I wave a Sergio flag? I mean, we talked about this previously about you know who would you want to go to have dinner with? Would you put their poster on your wall? And Sergio doesn't get to go to dinner with me, and he doesn't get his poster on my <laughs> wall. But at the same time, he um, I I think he's struggling with the car, and I don't know whether he's just downhearted or uh, whether the car is showing its true potential. And that's what I'm saying. I think that Max is having to stretch the Red Bull because, uh, you know, he's got some talent. I can't take it away from him. Um, but I think that Red Bull are going to be in trouble as a team to win the championship now. For, we've, got, we've got 12 more races to come and everybody else is caught up, whether it's Peaks and Troughs, whether it's McLaren one race, Mercedes or Ferrari. Uh, I think Red Bull's in a bit of trouble and they need Sergio there to protect Max and the points. And it's not happening. Well, Mike, who do you have as your boom surprise so far this year? You can pick a driver or you can pick a constructor. Oh, um, two teams. I would have to say the Alpine team because they started off the year. They were nowhere. Mm -hmm. And they've been scoring points regular. And, of course, the Mercedes team because they started off the year. They were, they were fourth or fifth in the Constructors' Championship. And then you and the last few races have come on song a little bit better. Come on song. <laughs> come on song. Come on song. Come on strong. Come on song. Come on strong. Song. 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 S O N G. Yes. I don't think that's a word for you. You can yes, use. Yes, it is. On song. So the what? player is on song. In other words, he's he's doing far better now. He's he's in his sweet. Nobody points. knows that. Nobody says that. Yeah. Nobody, nobody, uh, nobody says on song. I'm, I'm, nobody I'm, says on I'm, song. I'm, I'm, <laughs> coming on strong. No one says I'm coming on song. Like, look at me, I'm coming on song. No, they say it, I'm coming on it, strong. What are you talking okay, about? Okay, Yuki Sonoda. Anyways. And, and I've got one for you as well. Here's one that really bugs me, and it's been said a couple of times recently, and I wrote it down and looked it up. I cannot stand when somebody says the phrase, the winningest something, the winningest car. And I looked it up, and it's genuinely a legal word. And I'm like, yeah. that just sounds so bad. It sounds dumb. The yeah. winningest. It's a real thing. The best is. <laughs> I hate it. The best is. The best is. Well, for me, <laughs> my uh, boom surprise is the McLaren. Oh, well, the McLaren's gotten that. They've been good all year. They just keep, they keep getting every every time. They're like Red Bull right now. Every time they bring a, a piece to the car, it works. So that, McLaren has done a fabulous job this year. And not only have they done a fabulous job, you got Lando Norris. Right up there, number two, and he's, is he number two in the he's points? number two in the points right now. He's, yeah, he in my win. opinion, he's not going to win the championship. Well, I mean, no, we know he's not going to win the championship, but he has 171 points. And Max Verstappen, of course, Super Max has 255. Super Max has 255 points. He's not going to catch him because <laughs> he's still in that. Making too many mistakes to win a championship. Well, he keep, and Max keeps McLaren make, has made some mistakes. They're not ready to win a constructors championship. No. I don't think you saw that. Unless, the British they Open, come out, if they British come, Grand Prix, you saw it also in Canada too. If, if they come out of the made, summer break and they just win all the races, yeah, they could win the championship. But they're not going to win all the races. That's the only way. Because <laughs> remember, Max is going to finish second or third in every Grand Prix for the rest of the season. So. I still think that Red Bull. I don't know why they changed their car so much. I, I'm, I, because their last year's car was so dominant, and they didn't bring an evolution of that car. I'm still, and their new car, the car they have now, 
doesn't work in slow uh, at slow courses. It didn't work at Monaco. It's not going to work at the next Grand Prix. But it's really going to work at the Hungaro Ring. Oh, it's really going to work at Monza then. Oh, at the Hungaro Ring, you don't, you don't, I look don't to... know. I think he, they're going to. When would you take? Before we go to the next topic, Paul, when would you take your points penalty if you're Max? Because he's going to have to take a, a a grid penalty for the engine. What's wrong with this engine? Because he's, those engines don't last the whole season, knucklehead. Well, they only get three of them, right? Yes, but he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to replace it. They don't have the parts, and they've already talked about it. When you, when would you take your penalty, Paul? Well, okay, so Mike, just so you know, um, if you look at the league table of uh, parts, uh, uh, budget for parts, uh, Red Bull have are the top, and they are going to take. It's not just one penalty they're going to take. They're going to end up taking quite a few penalties from now to the end of the season, um, and they're, uh, yeah, that's going to mean grid place penalties. Um, when would I take mine? I don't think it matters anymore. Um, it's it's not about when they're going to take a penalty because I'm sure other teams are going to have to take penalties too. <laughs> it's more about what is going to happen for the rest of this season. And um, I think Red Bull are going to struggle because they're not bringing the right parts, as you said. It's got nothing to do with the fact that Adrian hasn't been around for the last five or six races. Oops. Yeah, he's, he's not. Yeah, it has nothing Adrian to do with has it. Nothing, yeah, nothing. He has yeah. nothing has to do with nothing, 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 nothing at all. Nothing. He, he nothing. shows up for the races yeah. to hang out. He, yeah. But he's not doing The only it. reason, hold on, the only reason that, that he's showing up, the, the only reason he is showing up at races is because they are the races where they're trying to sell the RB17 road car. There are 50 cars to be sold, and they are 2 million they're each or 6 sold, million. Though. 6 million each or something like that. 6 million each. 6 million each. Yeah, yeah. but they've are, I think they've yeah. all been sold already. I don't think there's a... They look great, though, don't they? Yeah, but if you did road have cars, like you'd, you'd be better mm -hmm. off with a Mercedes or a BMW. I don't know. I'm watching even right now, a few minutes ago, I'm watching different people like Shmi150, uh, who's a huge YouTuber. He's one of the biggest car YouTubers. Um, and he's done a whole walk around to the brand new release of the RB17. It looks amazing. Um, but, you know, Adrian is kind of, his head is buried in that. I, I did a funny piece, Sherman, that you read um, about, you know, the RB, the, uh, the, the Red Bull team video call and what it would sound like. And one right. of them was, you know, Adrian joined the room, admin removed Adrian from the room, you know, and I kept doing that. And it's like, so the turn of events that, that feels to me, is just like, it's very coincidental that as the Red Bull is starting to fall back with its aero and trying to play catch up against McLaren, Mercedes and Ferrari, it just happens to be that Adrian's not there to help them make the tweaks for right. the aero they need. Uh, so I, I am I'm in doubt. Plus surprise. <clears throat> If you could pick uh, a driver or a constructor, who's your bus surprise so far uh, at that midway point of the season? I think Haas has surprised us a bit this year because we all knew that it was a bus, 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 bus. It was a meaning, dumpster fire. Huh? Bus meaning like they're they're disappointing. Bus. No, B -U -S. bus. I mean, I, I'm surprised by Haas because we all know that you know there's no backing in there, so it's a bit of a dumpster fire. The only difference was the new leader uh, for the team. I can't pronounce his name. Uh, Say again? Kamatsu. 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 And, and the only reason that that, it just seems to be making a difference because um, I don't think that Gene has just opened his checkbook. I, I think that um, Kamatsu is making a difference with the arrow uh, uh, because it's the same engine as the one in the Red Bull, right? I think. Um, no, the Ferrari. So, Ferrari. Ferrari. But Ferrari engine. But it's, look, it's just, it, they seem to be crawling forward and we all expected them to just be down the bottom and, and having a really hard time but they've actually been showing us at a few races they're pretty good they can they can turn the wheel now which is well, kind of nice up in uh in, what do you think mike what's your in silverstone they came up with a, a whole new uh upgrades and they were what they finished sixth in the race yeah or something? Well, Hulk that's yeah. insane yeah. they're not a sixth place team well that's two they're races against. in a row actually that they finished that whole there are, there are six there are, if, if they finish 10th any of yeah. these teams like williams stake and haas if they finish 10th that's a and win Al, what about alpine well alpine too Al, but alpine has been they i don't know what alpine's done but they've done something and then now they have flavio coming back that's a destination and as long as they can keep the drivers at different ends of the grids we're fine yeah so who you know would you take as your bus surprise Bus, bus surprise of the season. The, the, Al, the Alpine team—they're a factory team. They're, 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 they, they are. 
I mean, when they started off the season, I'm like, oh my god, they were so bad. I think they were 25, yeah. 30. They were so bad. They're 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 a factory team. A factory team should not ever 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 be in the mid. They should be at the the the, the front of the field. They were at the they were like at they were at the back of the field by a lot, not by a little. In the first two or three races, they were nowhere, and then they just kind of. Whoever's running that team, they finally, I think they finally found someone to run the team well, there. I think it had a lot to do with at the beginning of the season, they were 25 to 30 kilos overweight to call. That, that, because remember, the, all their whole technical team left before the season started. Yeah. That was, and got fired. They didn't get fired, they quit. All of them quit. The technical they were, director, they the guy fired. who signed the front left. <laughs> Who did they publicly fire? Was it last year or early this year? They, oh, that they was um, uh, a size of the, the He used to be at uh, um, at Aston Martin, yeah. and they fired him, and then he went there, and then they fired him too. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah, what yeah, the yeah, hell yeah, are you yeah. doing? They fired yeah. everybody. <laughs> they, yeah. So for me, my my bus surprise of the year is you no, no bus, 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 meaning no good. I reckon Alonso's gone. I reckon Alonso's gone at the end of the year. If Alon if if Aston don't pull up their socks and provide him with a car that he can work with, he's gone at the end of the year. But there's a good chance Adrian knew he's going to Aston Martin. So it doesn't like matter. It doesn't matter. To okay, wait, wait. Okay, let me take a hold of something. One, why did you take off your shoes just now? Because my, they were hurting my feet. Why did you do that? That's what I do. Does it smell? I don't want to smell your toes. I don't want to smell your feet. Come on. What's wrong with you? Anyways. Anyway, so right. like I was Back saying, Aston, Aston Martin, to me, they're the biggest fall of the year. Because remember, last year, the whole part, almost the whole front, a half of the season, Fernando Alonso was on the podium every, every race. Every race. But not anymore. He was even yes. second or third. He was, and he was, can you not do that? I'm putting chips in the bowl. We're, we're, we're doing a podcast. Can I you not, understand that. Can you not have the crunchiness in the background? Look at that. You're not supposed to eat on camera. <laughs> You're not supposed to eat on camera, you knucklehead. You want another drink? Can, can I... Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, people. You see what I have to deal with. You see what Paul has to deal with. You see what we're working with. So it's just an unprofessional Neanderthal. I mean, he goes. I'm a Neanderthal? You're a Neanderthal. He takes his no, shoes off. We're going to dinner and, tonight. And look, I got to smell his feet. And then he goes and gets chips. During the podcast, and he's eating during the podcast. I'm hungry, aren't you I, hungry? I apologize. I, I, he knows <laughs> not what he do, as they would say, or he knows not what he does. Remember, this is all for fun, everybody. We're not getting paid for this. One but day, if you subscribe and you give us money, we're going to go to all the races. And Paul's a, going, too. This is a perfect time to for everyone to <laughs> like. You want another drink? Subscribe and hit the like, the bell. So you can be the notified life. when there's a new episode available. We do shorts. We do full episodes. We also do special episodes. And Paul needs help. I need help. I need a sign that says help me. Because look what I have to deal with every week. It just if he left the table again. He left the table again to get, like he's getting salsa for his chips. He's just... He's, uh, oh, let me take a drink. Mm -mm. All right, let's get back to the podcast before people right. leave. All right, all right, all right. Enough, so, enough, 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 enough. 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 My, my bus was Aston Martin. Now, okay. who's your boom for the second half of the season? Who do you think is going to show up and show out for the second half oh, of McLaren. the season? McLaren's the next. Go ahead, Mike. You start out. McLaren. They're, 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 uh, technical director, I think, is the new Adrian Newey. Um. That team is is on the rise, and somebody just gave them a whole bunch of money. So, I think they're the team on the rise right now. Paul, what do you have to say? On the rise, my money is on McLaren and Mercedes 
but don't discount Ferrari and Red Bull is going to either stay still or slide down. For me, I'm going to go with Mercedes Benz. They've won the last two races, really? right? So they won in Austria. George Russell won in Austria. Yeah, but the Austrian Grand Prix, that was a lucky win. It was a lucky win. But Hamilton won the British Grand Prix, obviously, because it was mixed conditions. But the car the rain master. is now at least podium ready, whereas before it was fifth, sixth. You know, it wasn't really podium ready. I think now they're bringing upgrades to the car, and they're, they say they're going to bring some upgrades to Hungary. That's and two more races in the next two races. Yeah, so I think they're going to be vying for podiums and probably at, at certain tracks, race wins. Mm. Well, you know, I, I, I think, I think the, um, the Mercedes team, they're on the road. They're, they're, they're coming back from where they're, cause they were for two years, they were nowhere. And all of a sudden, they seem to be back. I don't know what they've done to the car because the car obviously is driving a lot better. But remember in the last race, if there was one more lap to that race, Max would have passed. Maybe two laps. No, one lap. He was. Uh, maybe two. Uh, getting getting up to them and passing them are two different things. But anyway, yeah. uh, so Lewis would have listened. There's some serious payback to be done by Lewis towards Max, and if he did got if Max had got near him, he would have defended his position. He would have. <laughs> he, he would have defended. No doubt. That's right. He would have. Would have. Now, who is your bus? Be, 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 half. Who, if oh. Paul, who are you going to pick for the team or? Driver, that's can you not eat on the camera? Come on, man. Seriously, come on. That's just that's just rude. People are listening and you're munching in the background. Okay, come no on. more. I'm not gonna eat anymore. I'm just come gonna drink. All right, so Paul, who do you have as your bus for the second half of the season? Sergio Perez. <laughs> you just really, you just really <laughs> want to pick on Sergio, don't you? He just really want to beat Sergio. I don't think he's going to turn it around. I think he's going to really be in trouble. Um, and who else? Ricardo. And, and I, I think Bottas is gone. I don't think he's going to get a drive next year, unless there is a surprise. And if if uh, if Sainz cannot do a deal, if Sainz cannot do a deal with Mercedes, you've got every chance you might see Bottas back in the Merc for a year. Mm. What do you think? He's Mike? a very agreeable no, no, person. No, no. Is Teddy Perahan. That's that's the rumor. He's going to Williams. Um, Science is going to either he's going to go to the Audi team or he's going to go to Mercedes. That's he goes to the team. That's, that's my guess. guess. My guess. He's got to sit. No, my goes to the my, is the same question that I had for Paul was who's your bus for the second half of the season? Now he just said that <laughs> he thinks. His bus, obviously, he's picking on Sergio. He's really no Sergio. Has, he has something up his keister for Sergio right now, and he's really on Sergio. So who who who's yours? Who do you have? I I, I anybody on the Williams team right now? Anytime they get in the top ten is a big deal for that team. But um, the but yeah, I think it's Sergio. I think he's right about that. Yeah, because last year he did the same thing. He but he he was like he had like. Five or six or seven races where he didn't do well, and then he kind of came back. So you guys are killing Sergio. I'm not killing him. I'm just saying. You, so for me, my you bus want? after the season is Haas, and the reason yep. why I say Haas is because usually they don't bring upgrades in the second half of the season. Because they just brought upgrades. I said the second half. No, you listen, listen. The second half of the season <laughs> because they don't have as much money as the other teams. And Gene Haas doesn't like to spin all the way throughout he, the season. He spends a hundred million dollars a year on that team. He spends. It's just not uh, one hundred fifty million dollars is what he needs. When Toyota Toyota's coming, and we're going to talk about Toyota later, but Toyota's coming next year, I think. To Gene, can I finish my point? Oh, because you finished. get to finish your point and eat and drink, and then Paul finishes his point. <laughs> but then when I want to finish my point. You cut me okay, off your with point, useless genius. dribble. No one cares. No one cares. No one cares. You've already Man, made that. You're going to get to retire next right. year. I'm so, so jealous right now. The point is, is that Haas typically doesn't bring that many upgrades on the second half of the season. And the reason why is because they don't want to spend all that money and they start already working on next year's car. So typically that has happened every year, except for that one year when Haas pushed on the scene and they were like getting fourths and fifths. Ever since then, the second half of the season, they tank. 
So that's that's my plus for the second. I don't think they're going to tank this year. Their car was so much better this this last race. I I, I think they came up. They found something in their car. <laughs> what do you think, Paul? I don't dare speak. <laughs> I don't dare speak. <laughs> don't dare speak. Okay, so I didn't get I didn't get a chance to say something, but I am worried about Williams. Um, they, you know, like I love James Vows. I always loved him when he was at Mercedes. I think he's a great character, a great person, but um, I'm not seeing serious improvement in that Williams. Uh, Albon has put it in 10th a couple of times, but um, I just, I'm concerned. Um, and I'd like to see Williams crawling up the grid quicker. Uh, we all thought that, you know, uh, James has been there now a year and a half or two years. Um, it should be seeing improvement. Darlton Capital has put good money in there. Um, I, I think if there was a driver, and I'm going to get shot for this, but I think a driver better than Albon, um, in that other car, then they might be getting more points. I, I am worried about, I like him, I like him a lot, but I don't think Albon is the star driver that everybody kind of makes out. Uh, I think if he was in an equal Red Bull, let's say, I don't think he would do as well as, as Max. I don't think, I think he'd be doing worse than Sergio. So um, I'm concerned mm -hmm. about Williams. That's my tanker for the moment. Uh, Haas, I'm, I'm with Mike on this. Um, I think that Haas is climbing back up slowly but surely. Um, look, we all know what Gene Haas is just using that as a mobile advertising platform. Um, he's got so many other irons in the fire coming out of America and American series racing and preparing cars and, and spare parts and all these kind of things that he does that uh, this is just a fabulous advertising tool for him. And, and for Toyota to come in and partner with uh, Haas, it would be, um, there's got to be a reason. And the reason is he's eventually, he is going to sell out. And I'm very surprised. And I know he doesn't like Andretti, but I'm surprised he wouldn't sell out to Andretti. Um, and I, I, can't, I can't believe the development pace of Andretti. They've just opened a brand new facility in the UK. <clears throat> they don't even have a place on the grid. So if anybody has ever shown that they want to join Formula One, it's pretty amazing the amount of money Andretti have spent to try and prove that they could be in Formula One, but there's no guarantees they're going to get in. So they I, may I, have spent I don't think Haas is going to sell his team. Um, I think Andretti is going to get a spot, a spot on the grid in 2026 or seven or when or whatever. <laughs> and it's just going to take some time, but um, I don't think Haas is ever going to sell because it's a, he, especially even his NASCAR team. Just got most of it got sold, but he's still going to have a NASCAR team. He what? likes the. Um, how many what? times have uh, how many times have Toyota engined cars won in NASCAR or Indy? I, I can't remember. I don't know what they run in they've the states. Never, they've never been in um, um, NASCAR, but they were in Indy for in about Indy. Okay. okay. So then and they does, were does Haas they run, they does Haas run Indy? Does Haas run Indy? No. Okay, no. right. Okay, I thought maybe there was a bit of a marriage there. That, that that's why he would let them into the Formula One. I know Toyota no, no, wants. No. He, I know he's Honda wants them to come. They're gonna, they're gonna <laughs> give him money and they're gonna give him engines. So, and the hot there's. I think before too long, all the teams are gonna be are gonna be factory teams. They're all teams. manufacturing teams. Yeah. yeah. So I know I, for a fact. I know for a fact that Honda wants back. Toyota wants back. I think Hyundai is trying to get in. Um, and I know that we've got Ferrari, we've got Mercedes, not Renault, but Renault. We have Audi, we have Ford. Um, Audi, Ford of course, the, wanted uh, in. Yeah. Ford will be the engine uh, supplier <laughs> for Red Bull. Hi which hybrid the, part. Uh, hybrid part. Hybrid yeah. part for the Red Bull. Yeah. yeah. Well, Red Bull's going to make their own engines. They have their own engine department now, which yeah. the, the cars they're running now are, are not are not Hondas. They're really Red Bull engines. But when Ford comes in, Ford's just going to give them money. So they're not going to be, they say they're going to be a technical partner, but they're not. They're just, they're just going to make their own engines. Honda is going to be the new Aston Martin team, which will be the Honda team. It won't be Aston Martin, I don't believe. Um, yeah, the only problem then, there is that Aramco have bought a huge chunk of Aston Martin. They bought so a huge kind of, chunk of Aston Martin. Yeah, so it doesn't make any sense why Aramco would do that and then buckle, buckle out it to give over to uh, Honda if they were to become the new engine partner. It, it's kind of messy, and it doesn't actually have an ending to the story. And I don't know how much of it is kind of realistic because I don't see 
Aramco just trying to partner with Honda and then suddenly what? Red Bull disappears. It, it just doesn't make any sense. If anything, Red Bull... Uh, let's let's, let's the dive into thing. the next subject. What's the next subject? Paul finished his sentence. What's wrong with Charles Leclerc? There's nothing wrong with Charles Leclerc. I'm not asking you. Your name's not Paul. Oh, Paul. His name is Paul. Your name is Mike. I'm asking Paul. Paul, what's wrong with Charles Leclerc? Oh, he's got it. He's got papers. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with Charles. There's nothing wrong with him. Um, I I just think that it's either bad luck <laughs> or or just something with the car or with the pit calls, whatever it might be. It just doesn't seem to. He just doesn't have that magic right now. And, and I, do I think that Charles will ever win a championship? Yes, I actually think he could. Um, I just think that the the seatbelt gets unbuckled in the middle of a race sometimes, and it's messy. Um, but I don't think that Charles falls apart. No. I don't think he gets bored. I think he keeps his focus um, as lo- the way the way Lewis would. Um, and I think that, by the way, I think Lewis being at Ferrari and coaching uh, Charles will make him a much much stronger driver. I don't believe that Carlos is coaching um, Ch- Charles, and I don't think that Charles is coaching. Uh, science so it's kind of messy but i do think that lewis will give it all to uh to charles so i don't know i don't i don't think there's anything wrong with him what do you what's wrong with daniel ricardo yeah i i I have no idea what's wrong with daniel ricardo um that this whole nonsense that he's going to be he's going to replace chaco i don't think that's going to happen but nope um, not a chance um, I don't think he's going to be at Cash Carb or whatever the hell the name of that team is. I don't think he's going to be there next year. I think he's going to be back in the Alpine. That's my prediction. Um, But he doesn't seem – every car he's been in since he was at Red Bull doesn't work for him. Hmm. So I I don't know what's going on with him. And he made so much money. (laughs) He made so much – Well, actually, the car at – before Alpine, the Renault worked for him. Well, he was better than his teammate. He's way better than his teammate, and he was actually pretty racy at Renault. For me, what's wrong with Checo Perez now? As you guys are piling on Checo, <laughs> I get this, and it's not fair. You got you, you can't. You had your whole diatribe about Checo. You have a diatribe about Checo. So I guess I get this question. To me, Checo is just streaky. He's like that streaky baseball player or streaky basketball player. That the basketball player that can score like 30 points, 25 points, 26 points, and then all of a sudden he gets 10 points, like five points and eight points. And you're like, wait, wait, what happened to this guy? Like Checo, when he's on, you know, he could win a street race. He can be second to max. He can qualify third or fourth and then move up the grid as the race goes on with race pace. He's a great defender, but I just think he's just streaky. And when he's streaky, He's, it's just, it's top of the mountain or it's down in the valleys with him. There's really no even keel, and that's where he should be, but he's just not that type of racer. Red Bull's going to win the Drivers and the Constructors Championship at the end. Does Yuki Sonoda oh, deserve God. to drive for Red Bull? No. I should start this because everybody knows that Yuki deserves that damn seat. Yuki's they in, put in, Liam Lawson in that seat, he beat him. They put DeBreeze in that seat, he beat him. They put Daniel Ricciardo in that seat, he beat him. They'll put you in the seat, he'll beat you. They put you in the seat, he'll beat you. Whoever comes against Yuki Tsunoda will go down. I would be fast. That's that right. Yuki, Yuki. Yuki's in that seat because of Honda. That's it. The end. Paul, what do you think? Uh, um, I think that Yuki should just stay where he is and ride it out because I don't think he, he got into the. the year, I don't think if he got in. Huh? Sorry. He has a year contract. He's 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 there for twenty twenty five. Okay. Uh, you asked, by the way, about Daniel and uh, uh, sorry about Sergio, by the way, and Sergio hasn't been on it since the beginning of twenty twenty three. 
that's it. He hasn't come back since. He really has fallen away since pretty much the crash at Monaco in 23 and in practice in, in Paul Quali. Uh, Daniel, I think Daniel's gone from Formula One. And um, I think there's going to be a lot of people shed at the end of this year. And then the other one is Yuki. And I, I don't know. Look, Yuki is Yuki. I, I have no opinion against or for him. Do I think that if he was in the senior Red Bull team, he would do any better than Sergio was doing? Mm, same, same. Same, no, same. No. That's just my opinion. Same, same. Herman loves him because he loves his hair. Adrian Newey will go to <laughs> Red Bull. He's going to he's going to Ferrari. If he, if he goes to Aston Martin, it's like I don't know. He can go either place. It's one or the other. But I think he's going to go to Ferrari. Paul, what do you think? I think he's going to go to Ferrari. But um, if he went to Aston, and this is what you were saying about Alonso earlier, but then the two of you were fighting. <laughs> I was trying to say to you that even if Adrian goes to Aston Martin, it's too late for. Alonso to stay to watch a progression that Adrian could bring to the car. Anything that Adrian does is going to take two years. Little bits and then a remake is going to take so two years. So piggyback and off of what you just said, how long do you think Alonso is going to stay at Aston Martin? He has another two years and he has an ambassadorship. So if he has an ambassadorship, that means he's probably can't, he's not going to leave because they're not going to give him an ambassadorship if he's going to Williams. At what point do the shareholders of Lawrence Stroll say, Lawrence, you got nepotism going on with your son and we're not scoring enough points with him. And now you have a driver that is, you know, he's trying when the car is right. If the car's not right, he's going to actually he's not lambasting uh, or lambasting Aston for a bad car this time. He's been quite nice about it all. Like he was pretty fruitful about McLaren and he was pretty nasty about other teams when the car's not right. This is a Formula 2 engine, remember? Uh, and I don't know. I think that if it's not right, Alonso is gone. He will go to some other series and try to prove a point somewhere else in his last year or two of racing. He's 42 at, at this stage. Um, and I just he's not going to want to start over and he's not going to want to drag a tired car around, you know, 24 races. He's what? not there. To lose. Um, I th he signed a two year contract. So he's going to be there for 25 and 26, supposedly. Um, if Adrian goes to Aston Martin, but they already have the guy who used to work for Adrian at Aston Martin. And I don't know why the car is so bad this year. It makes no it makes no sense because they were so good last year. But yeah, I think I think Adrian is going to go to Ferrari, and I think Fernando he might race next year. He's probably not going to race in twenty twenty six. I don't see that. But maybe he does. Who knows? You know, because he's still in good I, shape and he's still. Go ahead. Paul? I got a question. I got a thing. So um, if he. If he's got a two year, and remember, this works both ways. So if the car's not producing, he can walk. Uh, ambassadorship or not, he can still walk. Um, and it, it, as I said, it's going to take two years. If Adrian goes there to Aston Martin, um, realistically, it, it's going to be like a year of messing around and a year of proper design. So technically, it's like trying to land on your feet on 2026 with the best new design. And And I don't see Adrian going to Aston. And I know people have been like trying to like, oh, well, Adrian doesn't want to go and live in Italy. He doesn't need to. He only needs to visit there occasionally on a private jet. It's not a problem. They'll pick him up at the airport. Yeah, drop him an hour and a half airplane so, Yeah, exactly. He'll spend three or four days a week for, for a year in Italy. And then he'll come home and he'll do his designs on, on whatever. Apparently, he doesn't use computers most of the time. It's all by hand. No, he um, writes everything, he hand everything by hand. Yeah, he hand draws everything. Yeah. So, you know, okay. they're, still they're still scanning and faxes and whatever. <laughs> The Esteban Ocon Ollie Berman pairing will be a. I'm not going to you because I told you to stop eating. Yeah, that be a no, no, I'm not going to you right now because you're eating on camera and I've told you you can't eat on camera. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, Paul, <laughs> here, Daddy. I'm going to you and tell me the Esteban Ocon Ollie Berman pairing will be a disaster. Is that, he's right Expand. about that. Expand. I thought you wanted like a one-word answer. A disaster. Yeah, I think 
Tony Berman is going to show up awkward. He's going to make a fool of Ocon. You think Ali Berman's going to be better than Ocon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. He's going to make a fool of him. Really? <laughs> yeah. Why, I don't why rate do you say Ocon. that? Why do you say that? Me? I don't yeah. rate Ocon. I don't rate Ocon. I think that he is a an impulsive, aggressive driver. And I think that Berman is more skilled. I've seen him in F2 and, and things like that. I think he's got more skill set than Ocon. Hmm. I haven't heard... Uh, I haven't heard too many people say that. What do you think, Mike? Oh, well, Are you finished eating first? He's good. Do, do you have stuff out of your teeth? He's good. Okay. No, he's really well, good. You can see you right now with stuff I, th- I think. Uh, uh, see? I think right. uh, Haas should have kept, if, if, they, if, they, if they're going to get Ocon, I think they should have just kept Magnuson because Magnuson's a good driver. Um I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not. They, okay, by the way, this hasn't been announced yet. We don't know. That Ocon's going to Haas. Well, that's what they say. That's what everybody says. It's a, it's a rumor, but it's it more than a gospel. It doesn't make it gospel. But anyways, I think they should have just left Magnus in there because Ollie Berman is the future. He's going to be in the Ferrari in a couple of years. When Hamilton <clears throat> retires, Ollie Berman will be in the Ferrari. So I agree that Ollie Berman, if he does well at Haas, will definitely be in the Ferrari when Hamilton retires. But my thing about Ocon is. He's like the worst teammate of everybody on the grid. He's proven he's the worst teammate of all of them. So why would you pair your young up-and-coming star with the guy who, one, is bad with teammates, two, what is he going to offer Ali other than trying to run him off the road because at turn one, Ali was ahead for like a half a second. I mean, I don't really think out of all the drivers to pick that he's the one to go and pair with Berman. If it well, was me, I would have went with Botas or somebody like that. He's bringing Some, money. Somebody. Can I finish? He's bringing money. Can I, That's can the I finish? Can going. I finish? Well, finish can your, I finish? Finish your nonsense. And I can get it over. With. You're what nonsense? <laughs> the crap is about to come out of your mouth. Come on. I mean, once you hey, go have a spritz or something. A spritz. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing the desecration of America F1 right here live Whoa. at the Partnership Splits 2. <laughs> you see what I have to deal with. Everyone sees. They all know. They all know. That's what they're coming. That's what they come for. They come for this oh crap. Um, so I probably wouldn't have kept Magnuson to pair with Ali, but I definitely would have took somebody like uh, oh, Al because he's a consummate pro- professional. He's not going to complain. He's going to he's won quite a few races yeah. in his time. He's quite quick over a lap. He's good in mixed conditions. There's a lot he can mentor Ali about. And I think he would be the consummate professional and team player. And Esteban Ocon, in my opinion, he's is the total fucking, opposite He's of a that. nightmare is where he is. I mean, I was up at the track one time. I'm going to tell, tell a story about driving because Sherman, uh, Sherman knows nothing about that. And I've told Sherman I will pay for his, his cart day. Has he picked a date? No, no. one wants to hear Somebody about it. did this to me. He, he he did not know how to drive. He did crazy stuff like Ocon does. Ocon is not a professional. I don't know where why he's still in Formula One. I hope he doesn't get the cost seat. I hope they keep Magnuson, but you can't drive the way that dude drives. I it's think just... Ocon's better than Magnus. No, he's not. No, I think so. You're a better moron. than you don't. Better than you're, you're, a moron. Moron. you're, you're a the moron. one doing a podcast with your socks. My socks and are you're on. eating. I, and I, you get up. But I need and it. you look at planes like during the podcast. You're a weirdo. Where, I, <laughs> give me a break. You love <laughs> Star Trek or Star Wars? Or I whatever. love Star Wars. It's it's a good show. Anyways, let's. Well, what's you don't one? know how good Star Wars is until you go. No, what the is first it, driver what is to win May is fourth? second. Is, isn't that the fourth? The first driver. To, yeah, stop talking. Stop talking. <laughs> the first driver to win a second race this season will be Paul. We'll give it to you since Lando Norris. I said Paul. Your name's not Paul. Your name is Mike. I'm Mike. Paul. At the moment, Mike. I think it might be Lewis. If if Mercedes is on the roll, we think it is, and they're bringing upgrades again for the next two races, and they seem to understand the car, I think there's every chance that Lewis will be the next double winner as such that isn't Max Verstappen. Mike, and I don't know why we have to get your opinion, but I guess we do. 
Chief. Mike, what do you think? Who's going to be the I, second? I one thousand percent agree with Paul. I think we got a trifecta, baby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is going to can dominate that the Hungarian ring coming up. Oh my god, for sure. I, 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 he's like he's won that race also the most. I, I but but I think uh, um, it's going to be Lando and uh, Piastri. I think Ferrari will have a good showing. Uh, no, so I think the still has to win a race. Remember, this was about who was going to win a second race. So we've well, already I got Max. Because he doesn't yeah. listen. He doesn't listen. But the McLaren is is a good car, and I think it's going to be good at the the Hungaro ring, and he might have a chance. <clears throat> so, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Paul. Sorry. No, no, no. Go, go, you go, you go, you go. Sergio Perez will win a race or be replaced in the second half. Of the year. He'll win a race. Neither. Neither. He's not going to get replaced oh. this year. He's not going to get replaced this year, and he's not going to win a race. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. You don't think it? What do, what do you think, Mike? No, I'm like, um, Paul's probably right. I mean, I'm just, I'm guess, we're, we're all guessing right now, but I mean, it's like, he can win a race. He can win a race. He's a good, he's a great race car driver. He's not in Formula One just because he's a hack or anything. He's a great race mm -hmm. car driver. Yeah. I like Sergio, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say before the season's over, Sergio Perez will be replaced. No. And not, he'll be replaced. No. Wow. Okay. He'll be replaced. And you gave, out, you gave out to us. You gave out to us for, for saying this. We were, we were jumping on him. And now you've jumped ship completely and said he's going to get replaced. Even I said he's not going to get replaced before the end of the season. I'm totally going like pirate. I'm, I'm making Sergio Perez uh, walk. You're clickbaiting. <laughs> so the headline for the, the headline for this post for this podcast is going to be Sergio Perez is going to get replaced before the end of the season. Quote Sherman. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I, he's Carlos struggling. Man. He's struggling, but the embarrassment for Red Bull. The embarrassment for Red Bull will be too big, so they will just grin and bear it to the end of the season. And then, if it's not working by the end of the season, he will be shuffled off. You know, I, I, I'm going to take that take back. You know why? Because you just made really good sense. Because it would be an embarrassment to Red Bull if they replace Sergio Perez yep. after signing him for a two year, another two year one on one contract. So yep. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to change my mind because that's <laughs> what I can do. I can change my mind. You change your mind? Yeah, because he made a really good point. His point was that it would be more of an embarrassment to Red Bull to replace Sergio after giving him a two-year I'm not contract. replacing Sergio. So I'm going to go with Paul. I like that. I like that. I like that. Carlos Sainz working mean... at? Yeah, Carlos... Mercedes. Carlos Sainz will end up at? For me, Mercedes, right? uh, honestly, it's a, it's a crapshoot. It's either Mercedes or Williams, or he could be out of a seat. I don't think he's going to sit in the sidelines in the Sauber for a year waiting for uh, Audi to start. I think he's going to be at the Mercedes. I really do. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Now, something that David Coulthard said, which was totally outrageous. Oh, wait, hold on. We have, we have to talk about we have to Wait, talk. can I finish? Can finish. I finish? Finish. Well, let me finish. Well, go on. Do you think? All right. Don't interrupt me again. All right? All right. I think David Coulthard, he said that Carlos Sainz should be the reserve driver for Ferrari and stay there, learn under Lewis Hamilton, and then when Lewis Hamilton goes, come back to Ferrari. Now, no. I think that's a total. A guy who's won four races in Formula One is not going to sit out. No. That's just ridiculous. That's a horrible take. And I think Carlos Sainz, he may – the reason why they're saying he's waiting, because they're saying if Max Verstappen does – Verstappen. If Supermax does – if Mad Max does take the journey to go to Mercedes, then that Red Bull seat will be open. And if he doesn't take that journey to Mercedes, he could go to Mercedes for he's the – He's going to Mercedes or Audi. Those go to the Mercedes for the stopgap. And maybe convince what him. What stopgap? Because they want Kimi Antonelli in the seat eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, five years from now. I mean, he hasn't even won a formula. He hasn't won an F. Well, he's not. A, he's he not won a sprint race, team. but he hasn't won an actual race race. 
So he's, he's not on good. A, he's he not, he's good. not on a good team, so it doesn't matter. He looked good at the British Grand Prix, though. Okay, I want to, I want to, I want to make a statement here. We have to give it up to uh, Ralph Schumacher. He just recently came out as a gay man. Um, we're yeah. not talking about Ralph Schumacher. You no, know, we're talking about Ralph Schumacher. Now, what do you think about this, Paul? Unfortunately for you, I have an opinion about Ralph Schumacher. I have disliked the man for several years. And when he came <laughs> out recently, when he came out recently, I privately messaged a lot of my friends and I went, see, I told you he's a C sucker. <laughs> what? A C a what? sucker. <laughs> What's that? Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Well, I'm like, like I'm like, it's really friendly show somewhat, except for you drinking, I just, I taking just, off I, your shoes, and being totally rude <laughs> to our the people that watch. But other than I'm that, not rude to anybody except you. But anyways, I I just want to say this because I I had a um a customer in my bar like a year ago who told me that Max, I mean that Ralph was a gay man. So what? And it's like no, but like we, he came out. He's like, I mean, we have to applaud him. It's like you know, do your thing. You know, you know what? I don't think it's news personally. I don't think that when people at in this day and age in 2024, if they come out gay, no, he who, was. Wait, he, listen, can he, I? He, he, he listen, listen, yes, listen. Okay. I don't think it matters. Who cares? I don't care. Oh, I, look, I come out. I'm not. I'm gay. Look at me. I'm gay. Who cares, man? It's 2024. Exactly. Be gay, be straight. That's your business. I don't think it's news. I don't really care. But I do know that's why he's always talking about Lewis's clothes. <laughs> Lewis is not gay. He's, 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 <laughs> that's why he's always <laughs> that's why he's always critiquing what Lewis wears. <laughs> he wants to be like Lewis's uh, free, designer or something like that. Free free plug, anyway, right? So I just, I being just a moderator. So wait, wait, Paul. Wait, let Paul say. No, no, let him finish. Let him finish. All I want to say is I had, when I was a kid, my mom had 10 gay friends who all died during the AIDS epidemic, who were fabulously wonderful people. And I don't want to ever say any disparaging things about who, what your lifestyle is. He should be himself. And I'm pretty sure he's been out loud and proud for a long time. He just came out to the public this time. But I just want to say this. I'm like, we, we need to. We're, we're all good people. Me and this idiot right here, we love each other. We hate each other, whatever. But everybody needs to be themselves. The end. Right. But I don't think it should be news. That's my. It's that, not news. It's that, not news. It, he just he just came yeah. out to the world. That's all. Okay. Yeah, I think I, 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 hang on. I, guys, guys, I get both sides of this conversation. You are 100% correct. It makes no odds what people choose in their lives, what path they take. And that's fine. We support it 100%. Uh, and it's so it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's not news. It just came out as news. And I thought it was quite poignant that his son put up a post as well that said, Dad, I stand behind you. And I thought that was a good choice. And not st <laughs> He gets it. OK. Anyway, and I did say what I was trying to say to you was I've never liked Ralph. I don't care whether he's straight, gay or whatever <laughs> he might be. And that's absolutely fine. I still think and I was right. He's a dick sucker. <laughs> do, That's what I was trying to say. Do either of you have a Ralph Schumacher story about when he was racing that made you either like or dislike him? Okay. He won the, I think it was the 2000 and something uh, Emily Grand Prix where he, was, he started off on the pole and he just, and I never thought he was going to win a race. And he just checked out and won the race. So he mm. was a really good driver. He was a lot better than we thought he was. He wasn't as good as his brother, but <laughs> that's for sure. But he was a great Formula One driver. A great Formula One well, driver. Well, he wasn't great. No, I think he was a great he was okay. He was good. He was okay. Now, wasn't he driving no, he for Toyota? Great. No, he's not he driving great. six for... wins. If you win six times, you're not great. That, that's how many times Montoya won. And he's the he And great. Daniel Ricardo's won what, eight? Seven? Eight. And I think seven for seven or eight. But oh, yeah. eight because Mike, we had that bet <laughs> loss, so it's eight. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, think, I don't. There was I something about he, something about the guy. He was smarmy. I just didn't like him, and hey, I've never liked like him. Like now that he's become now that he's become a bit of a TV pundit, 
he just comes out with these nasty little comments and that's why i really don't like him anymore like nico rosberg like don't put a microphone in front of nico rosberg again <laughs> um, so annoying um and sherman you got a photograph with him didn't you when you were at silverstone I did my son he, he, he yeah uh, nico broke the curse by my son taking a picture with him and that's the reason why lewis hamilton won because we broke the curse. Because usually when Nico stands in front of your garage, yeah. something happens to your <laughs> car or you lose. But this time I had my son go in and grab Nico and they took a nice picture together. And my son <laughs> broke the curse. And that's why Lewis Hamilton won the British Grand Prix. Because of my did you son. Have a special, did, I saw the picture. Did you have a special filter on that camera? Or did Nico have a ton of work done to his face? Nico? No, it's a, uh, you, you don't. It's, you weren't there. He's asking have... that question to me. He's not asking it to you. Did you see the photograph, Mike? Yeah. Mike, did you see okay. the photograph? Oh, look, 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 don't, don't speak. So don't, aggressive. don't speak. Don't speak. So, Mike, did you yeah. see the photograph? Mike, did you see the photograph? I did see the photograph. Yeah. Look at, now, like look again at Nico's point. face. Look again so, at Nico's face. Nico, he looks like he had a ton of plastic surgery done. He has. I don't think he has. That's the way he looks. Oh, Mike. Okay. Why? I'm gonna let me yeah, he's drunk now. I'm getting the picture. Sherman's getting pictures up right now. Watch this. Hold on. I know, I know. I want you to see the picture so, again because I, I genuinely think, saw that and I went, Whoa. I think that Nico Rosberg <laughs> has had some work. Yeah, he, oh, he, he had a lot. He had a lot that of makeup. For the camera, he, had makeup? The TV he had a lot of makeup. Different. He was on TV, right? Anybody who's on TV, they always have makeup done. It's like you. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Even though he had Same makeup. the crevices and the lines and stuff. Even though he had makeup done, it does look like he's had some work done. I don't miss it. Yeah, exactly. It really does. Like his face looks elongated and his cheeks look funny. And yeah, yeah. There you go. So I think he's always looked like that. So it looks like he's had some work done. And see my son who broke the curse. Yeah. They took. Picture. It was very nice of Nico to take a picture with my son at Silver Stun. Stone. Well, Silver Stun. Nico needs Nico so, needs everybody to take photographs with him these days. <laughs> One race winner oh, and oh, gone. We were, <laughs> oh, we're gonna sit here. We're gonna argue no matter what. It's that's part of our show. If if yeah. people don't like it, well then don't watch our show. But I did <laughs> stop saying Max were stupid. I I haven't done that. I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, you, what are you saying now? Mad Max. Mad Max. Or Maxi Pad? Ma I'm, right, no, did you no, say Maxi I'm not, Pad? I'm not going to call him Maxi Pad. Okay. Hang so it's Mad I, Max. Okay. He's the best driver in Formula One right now. He has the best car. He's probably going to win the championship this year, and he's probably going to win next year. 2026. What's up, Mike? You know, Mike, you know that I like I do administration and moderation on several clubs, and that I'm going to do my own plug now. You know that I own the Sir Lewis Hamilton Ferrari F1 in on Facebook, which is now at fourteen and a half thousand members since uh, February second, which is uh, February first, which is amazing, and I'm really proud of it. But um, you know that I coined a phrase about three three and a half years ago for Max, Mike, and it's okay. uh, wax your, wax your strap on. <laughs> you don't know this. See, you don't do Facebook, do you? But I have this. I didn't this know that. I didn't phrase. know that. That's like a yeah, 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 that's my phrase. It's been repeated over all yeah, of social media. Now. Well, What's before, your strap before, on? Is my is my name for it? Uh, hour now, and so before we end today's episode, do you have anything that you want to add or any news? I just have? wanted to add about um, Ralph Schumacher coming out as gay. That's that's. I think that's. I think. I think. Um, him, because when you own own what you do, that always makes you a better person. But the other thing was uh, Toyota going to um, Haas. Now, I when think. is that supposed to happen? Toyota going next uh, twenty twenty six. Okay, so two years from now. Has been announced? Well, I don't know. Has that been announced that Toyota's going to Haas, or is it a rumor? It's it's all over the internet. It's so like, it's a rumor. But it's a rumor, but you know how rumors are in Formula One. I mean, they're going to form, they're going to Haas. It's like it's not a, they just haven't announced it yet. So it's going to happen. I mean, Formula, I mean, Haas is going to be the Toyota team. It's but Toyota 
Weren't they in F1 before? Yeah. And they, they were, of course. They, they failed. Four they failed when they got out. Uh, during the crash. They were horrible, weren't they? Four billion dollars. They got out during the crash. During the financial crash, they had to leave. 2009, they, they, they yeah. haven't been in Formula 1 for 15 years. They're coming oh. back. They're going to be the engine supplier for Haas. Um, I, I, I have no idea what's going to happen. It's like, But that's the rumor on the street right now. Paul, do you have anything you want to add? Anything you want to plug before we go away for our hour? You please, Rhoda. The best. The best. You guys are mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, we, we came on this show tonight to talk about the next half of the season. And, right. and I genuinely feel like Red Bull are under threat now for winning the championship, not Max. I think Max will stay ahead. Let's be realistic here. He's 80-odd points ahead. Do you remember 2021 when Lewis was behind and he spent the rest of the season, the rest of the half of the season, coming back and fighting like crazy, except for the debacle of, of Abu Dhabi 21? Yeah. Um, anything is possible if the cars... So if this is all about the aero packages. And then it's going to be about, well, I genuinely think Red Bull are having to stretch their car now to make it be competitive and they're burning through their engine parts and they're burning through the components. And I think they are going to suffer with grid place penalties, which is going to make a difference. It's going to be a tally. Uh, I'm not saying other teams are going to suffer as well with engine penalties. This is what happens. And I hate these seasons where the engine penalties start to make um, a difference to the championship. It really annoys me. It's another gimmick. Mm. It's a gimmick like the sprint races. Um, and for the rest of this season, if you asked which is it going to be, McLaren, Mercedes, uh, it's it's down to McLaren, Mercedes, and Red Bull. Actually, I don't think Ferrari are going to make enough of a comeback to get to win the championship this year. Um, and I think it's now down between. We're going to know very quickly whether it's Mercedes. Uh, I don't know if Mercedes can win the championship this year, so it's it could be McLaren or Red Bull now. And and that is Piastri is strong enough to to marry up with Lando and give him support. So I think that McLaren do stand a chance of winning the championship now. Outside bets, but yeah. For me, I'm going to say that I think this next race at the Hungarian Ring is one of the most anticipated races in a long time in Formula One because now that we see that. Other drivers can win other than Max Verstappen. Everybody wants Verstappen. to see Verstappen. <laughs> Mad Max. And Super Silverstone. Max. <laughs> other than I Mad Max. Super Max. He, I think, won Sir Lewis Hamilton, who dominates at the Hungarian Ring. He's also won the most at the Hungarian Ring, other than any other driver. He <laughs> has a great chance if he can qualify one or two. His qualifying pace hasn't been the best this year. I think it's probably been the worst of his whole career, in my opinion. Well, the numbers say it because George has been beating him pretty bad in qualifying. Mm -hmm. But if he can qualify in the top two, I'm looking for Lewis to win this next race. Yeah, agreed. Let's see. Agreed. Did you get However, I, did I, did, am I, are we boring you? <laughs> can we not do this, guys? Huh? Are we boring you? Are you okay? Sherman. Sherman. Come back to me. Look, just to say, yeah, I do. Lewis is on a roll, and so is George with that forward motion. So if they can, if the car is right for this one and the new add-ons, the new upgrades help them, then they have every chance of being, again, on the podiums and potentially winning this race. But if they get that momentum for this race, they will bring it forward. However, all we got, we've got two races and then we have the summer break, right? Yeah. So who knows what's going to happen after the summer break. But I just feel that there's a bit of a forward momentum now at Mercedes. And there's every chance if they can win this one, they could possibly win the next one. So it could change. Look, uh, I said Mercedes aren't going to win the championship no matter what now. But at least they could come in maybe second if they if they keep it up. That'd be awesome. If they could. I just want yeah, well, for me. <clears throat> I just want to see good racing. And before we leave, will Oscar <clears throat> Piastri win a race this year? Maybe. Oscar Piastri? Oh, yeah. It's, well, it's, got potential. it's got potential, but I don't know. I still think he's 
he's not messy. He's not messy like George. George can get messy. I said this before. I think George gets into a race. He's got a good position from from qualification, and then he just something happens. It just the jigsaw just starts to miss pieces, and he falls back, and then he moans, and it's like bad call, and you're giving Lewis a better call, and uh, it, it just it gets messy. And I think that Piastri, whilst he holds himself well uh, and speaks well, in you know he doesn't get nasty on the radio, um, and whatever the call is, he adheres to it. But I don't know if he's got a race win unless Lando does something wrong. Uh, maybe slides off track or hits Max. You know, we can all dream. Uh, and, but, you know, it, it's I don't see Piastri winning a race unless it's by default. Whereas I think Lando has more race in him. And I think Lewis definitely has one or two all more right, races. Well, we, we, need to end, we need to end this because we've been going for like an hour now. So um, I think that um, somebody's drunk. I've had, I've had a couple. Um, uh, we're going to dinner tonight. You're coming, right? You're gonna be sleeping, dude. You're I'll be, gonna, I'm gonna be going to dinner. You got there snoring in the back. Anyway, so thank you everyone for joining us for our mid-season boom or bust review, recap of Formula review. One 2024 season. Keep on racing, everybody. <laughs> Where's, where's the...